some of the big problems like energy production and food. And so we actually need them to be scientists studying problems here down on Earth as well. Exactly. It's fantastic. Peter, I want to bring you in here. Uh, do you think science can make the advancements needed without space exploration? It can make some advances. You're absolutely right. But it's a bit like trying to understand our entire planet by taking a stroll around your garden. We need to get out into space if we're going to fully understand the mysteries and the wonders of the universe. Fabulous. Now, Frank, you're a former commander of the space station. Why is it so important to you? Why is it vital that we explore space? Well, it, it's very vital. If you look in, in the past, uh, any time that societies have progressed, it's because they started to exploring. It's because they gained new lo knowledge, new experiences. So we have so many problems here on Earth. And if we want to solve those problems and really advance humanity, we need to continue to explore. And of course, the next frontier is space. So space is one of the areas in which we absolutely need to go further and to explore. Fabulous. You've crystallized my thoughts. Stephanie, can you remember what turned you on, why you got excited about science and space? Yes, I've been fascinated by science since I was a little kid. I can remember as far back as then being interested, particularly in nature and the living organisms and, and trying to understand how they work. And since I started working for BioSurf, it changes you. It's fantastic. So listen, I've been the uh, CEO, the executive director of the Planetary Society for a couple years now. I've been a member for 32 years. So I am very excited about what's going on today. Guys, we're, we're going to have to leave it here because uh, I'm getting word that we will be checking in with the ISS in just a few moments. It's uh, just over the Atlantic right now. So for you uh, International Space Station fact-finding buffs, I want to remind you it's going 28,000 kilometers an hour. That's uh, 470 kilometers a minute, 8 kilometers a second. That's um, like 17,500 miles an hour. It's 10 times faster than a bullet. So I hope our satellites can keep up. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. They're actually going a little bit faster. <laughs> so uh, now we're going to link up with the ISS and our astronaut, Sonny, Sunita Williams, in just about... 10 minutes. So I thought we should look at our winning experiments, which are currently hurtling through space. Uh, Am, can you bring over your uh, jumping spider experiment there off the sure. shelf? What exactly were you trying to find out with your spider cage in space? So I was trying to find out the effects of microgravity will have on the jumping spiders when they hunt their prey. I chose this uh, habitat because it had a chamber where the spider can uh, stay until uh, the box make it to the International Space Station. Uh, the chamber su uh, supports the, the spider and water provides and everything that the spider needs to thrive. Air. It has another chamber for the fruit flies, which I chosen as prey. <sighs> and <laughs> and uh, once in space and ready to begin, the astronaut uses the plunger system to oh, release to the release, fruit flies uh -huh. into the main chamber and the experiment can begin. So let's, let's take a look at your eight-legged uh, friend here. This is the zebra spider, zebra, because it's got the uh, happy stripes on its... Uh... It's, it's the Salticus cynicus, the zebra spider. It has four pairs of large eyes, curved legs, eight uh, curved legs, and uh, spinnerettes. For making silk. To, yeah. to glue silk threads. So uh, these eyes, this is a special deal for them. Whoa, whoa, it's a lot of eyes. <laughs> So the four pairs of eyes provide the spider with uh, a very wide view of a very wide view, and it's, uh, it's actually wider than the yeah, human must be. eyes. Yeah. And uh, so wherever the sp the prey is, it's always on the spider's radar screen, and the spider uh, can locate the prey. It has its eyes are actually almost as good as human eyes, and they see in color. Yep. Wow. So uh, here's the representation. The spider is uh, eyeing its prey hapless fruit fly, and the plan is, I guess, the spider's going to jump like this, right? Oh, here on Earth, the spider can approximate, this, it can estimate the distance and can adjust the Jumps. trajectory to yeah. compensate for gravity and land precisely on the prey. So what's, what's this right here? So before it jumps, the spider glues a silk thread to the, to the surface that's jumping from so that if it misses the target, it can climb up the thread uh -huh. and try again. Yeah, it's one thing on a flat surface, but if it's jumping like from a plant or from a flower, yeah, for yeah. example, for it, it so, can really um, save its life. So here we have a representation of uh, comparing the spider jump to the Olympic broad jumper or long jumper. And I see the spider goes, uh, no, that's the human that goes eight meters, point three one, eight meters. Point. 
And so uh, that was this year's gold medal, and that is about sort of four human body lengths, but a, this jumping spider goes a lot farther than that in body lengths, right? So f in terms of body lengths, the spider can do a, a lot more than four mm -hmm. uh, body lengths in, in, a, in its jump using no special muscles. Mm -hmm. and, and no running start. It doesn't have <laughs> <laughs> So uh, the idea is that you predicted the spider would have to make some adaptations in space, right? So in order to survive, it has to adapt because I suggest for the first free trial, the spider was just trying to... Yeah. yeah, it will compensate for gravity as it does here on Earth, so it will miss the target and just continue going. The target shown here. Yeah. But you think that after a while, maybe we'll see if the spider can adapt, right? So, at some times, I, I thought they might die, but I really hope they adapt. Uh, we'll see. But look, you guys, come on, spiders on a space station. The screenplay is going to write itself. Woo. So you're saying this is uh, an exact replica of the spider cage? Uh, as if that one in space. Spider habitat? Yeah. Uh, everything's fine, but you know, there's, there's no spider in there. Oh, there's not? Wh where are they? Did you guys see that? Did you see that? One small step for um, one giant leap for jumping spider kind. That's really good. Thanks, man. That's Thank great. You. Thank you, Mom. All right, let's move on to the other experiment. Dorothy, Sarah, your experiment was inspired by previous work that was carried out by NASA on the International Space Station on the bacteria Salmonella, right? Ooh, excuse me. <laughs> creep. So astronauts find that these bacteria that have been in orbit and came back to Earth are now more sick-making, more uh, what scientists call more virulent than they had been before they left. So, Sarah, Dorothy, uh, how, did, how did you come up with this? Uh, what, what was the idea? What grabs you about this? Well, what we wanted to find out was, because the salmonella becomes bad, more and more bad um, in space, more virulent, we thought, if that could happen, why not make the good bacteria more good and more virulent, in, but in a way that would be beneficial to humans? So, um, these two bacteria both have a common gene, um, called the HFQ gene, which makes Our good friend, the function. HFQ, it's yes. A good friend, yeah. Hey, so. can you get the, uh, get the uh, gizmo off the shelf? Sure, yeah. Just, uh, yeah. So this is, uh, somehow, you got the bacteria packed in these fabulous uh, space-worthy tubes, right? Right, we put yes. them in the top, and then um, Sunita Williams, astronaut, she cranks it, and then once they're in space, that lowers the bacteria uh -huh. into the bottom chamber where we have different mediums for them to grow in. Yeah. And, and so you don't want them mixing space. before you leave. That would sort no. of mess no, up the experiment. No, we don't want to, yeah, it's going to be purely growth in space. So this is what Bacillus subtilis looks like. I think, um, correct me if I'm wrong, the real ones aren't quite this big. Right? Not quite, yeah. no. <laughs> so uh, I would think maybe that if they, you know, bacteria just divide themselves in half, they'd split down here like when you barbecue a hot dog. But these go like this, right? They, uh, they split this way. They remind me very much of uh, Cheetos. And we're in Britain. I got to tell you, they don't call them Cheetos, they call them What's It's. So then you would say, What's It? And I say, Yes. <laughs> yeah, would you like it? Uh, oh. Not a fan. Yeah. <laughs> I've, never, uh, I've never, that I know of, tried Bacillus subtilis, but these, this probably tastes better. <laughs> so the idea is these things multiply really fast, right? They're bacteria. So yes. once we're in space, uh, they're, they're dividing and dividing. First you get two, then you get four, then eight, 16, 32, 64. <laughs> no, you get a lot of them. Yeah. So somehow you're thinking that they will get, they'll reproduce better. They'll get more fit, be stronger, right. more yeah. excited, sub, uh, bacteria, sub, <laughs> Yeah. So uh, they'd multiply like this very fast, many, many, many of them. But this, the idea was something can hold them back, right? So you came up with yes. a, a set of test tubes, yeah. if you will. Yeah, so uh, for the control, we were thinking like that would be the normal growth for Over bacillus. Here. Yeah. yeah. This would look like on Earth? Yes, and then um, like unaltered, uh, which would be the same test tube uh, as the control, only it'd be in space. This one here, so yes. this represented, this would be just a few little yeah. bacteria here, many, many bacteria. Yes. And then so you. These things, you mixed them, some stuff in with them, right? Yeah, we thought um, since like a phosphate ion was thought to have uh, curbed the growth and the virulence of the salmonella bacteria. Oh, on another experiment. Yeah, on the previous experiment, we thought that maybe um, if it's the same gene, you know, maybe the phosphate will help curb the growth and the virulence of the, the subtilis that we had. So, Dorothy, what's going on with that one? 